Hi friends, my name is Emily and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be filming a Shop My Shelves for the month of August. This is where I shop my TBR shelves based on your prompts. So I put out a call on Instagram that says find a book that dot 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 and you guys fill in prompts. It's sort of a book scavenger hunt kind of thing. I have not looked at these prompts and I'm going to do that right now. Gabby Wilkinson suggests that I get a dice and I roll the dice to pick shelf one to six. So let's number off these shelves together first. So slightly out of frame, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna roll the dice. And I got a five. So we're looking at two, three, four, five. We're looking at this shelf. Pick six books on that shelf and roll again. Okay. So we have Steering the Craft by Ursula K. Le Guin, Beyond the Pale by Emily Urquhart, I Am, I Am by something Maggie O'Farrell, um, The Gentle Art of Swedish Death Cleaning by Margaret Magnusson, we have Shrill by Lindsay West, and Pleasure Activism, The Politics of Feeling Good by Adrienne Marie Brown. We're going to roll the dice. Three. One, two, three. And that is... I am, I am. Ta-da! Please bear with any changes in the lighting because we have a series of thunder, st uh, thunder, thunder cells, thunder storm, storm cells. I know things about weather. I'm gonna show you the books that I picked new and then I'm gonna explain this pile of beautiful, wonderful things on my bed. There are so many responses here and I'm very, very excited about all of them. First book that is on my TBR at this moment right now is I Am, I Am, I Am by Maggie O'Farrell. This is 17 Brushes with Death, a memoir. I heard Jen Campbell talking about this and uh, it is as described. Uh, Maggie O'Farrell has had 17 Brushes with Death and I find that fascinating. So this is Gabby's little game almost, uh, which was actually really cool. It was a cool way to pick a book. Uh, the next book I have here, we can make fit for a couple of categories. So we have Women Who Run With the Wolves, Myths and Stories of the Wild Woman Archetype by Clarissa Pinkola Estes, who is a PhD apparently. She is a doctor and it says on the front, a deeply spiritual book she honors what is tough, smart, and untamed in women. She venerates the female soul. This is nonfiction. It is in the community and culture section at work. Fits the challenges. Makes me happy. From Leah Miao. My Ow. Sorry, I'm butchering your name. I'm so sorry. I love gender studies. I love community and culture conversations. And this just sounds fascinating because it's looking at fairy tales and myths. It meets the challenge from A Crimson Daisy, has the same color as my shirt. It will hopefully fit the challenge from Ailman 0919, which is will make me read for more than six hours because it's very addictive. I find academic books often just suck me in um, and I end up going down these little research rabbit holes and I'm hoping that is the case with this book. It also fits the has a cover with my favorite color from Bullet Stab. I mean, I think my favorite color in general is purple, but my favorite color to wear and to include in my spaces is black, which isn't an actual color, but there we go. <laughs> it meets the challenge from the Dragon Reader. I assume Instagram cuts the name off, which is has an alliteration in the title. Uh, if you can't tell, Women Who Run With The Wolves, www, so many w's. So there we have our alliteration and from Bookish Bluettes, it says, will get me into the steady mood. So I am placing a lot of a lot of weight on this book. Um, it meets so many of the challenges, so I think I'm gonna try and prioritize this. Maybe start it later today. The next book that I picked up because it was featured so many times on Booktube, and that is from Anna's, Anna's Book Reviews. And so I picked 
our dark duet by Victoria Schwab, and it's more Victoria Schwab as an author in general. I picked up her entire body of works with my staff discount, my staff appreciation discount over Christmas because I read A Conjuring of Magic and loved it and then picked up the rest of the books with the intention of reading through her entire body of works. And so I have decided to pick up a sort of chunky YA because I am feeling in the mood for a little bit of YA. YA feels very summer to me also because there's a lot of reading that I have to do this month for various projects. I'm hopeful that this will be a quick read and a nice break from a lot of the things that I know I have to read. Our Dark Duet by Victoria Schwab, which is about in the heart-pounding conclusion to this savage song. Oh! Maybe I should read the first book. Good thing I read the back. Let's put this savage song on my TBR instead. For all of the same reasons, but let's start with the beginning of the series. <laughs> so the next book I have here, I am picking because this should be considered a modern classic if it isn't considered a modern classic. And that is a challenge from Yeya Jaja, admirer of dot 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 Instagram cuts you off. If Beale Street Could Talk by James Baldwin. So this I believe I first picked up because somebody I chat with on Instagram, Noah Whitaker, he was reading through a lot of James Baldwin's works and he kept uh, hyping them up basically as being amazing. And so this I believe was price pointed at work at some point and there's a filmic adaptation of it. This is actually the film cover and it is small. So I figured small filmic adaptation plus high recommendations from Noah. I picked this up and if it's not a modern classic it sounds like it should be so I'm gonna put this on my TBR and hopefully get to it this month. The next book I have on here fits a couple of the challenges. So this is my actual favorite color which is purple. I don't wear a lot of this crack purple because it brings out the yellow in my skin. It makes me look a little jaundiced and unwell, but it is my favorite color. Going back to Bullet Stabs Challenge, I think this will fit inspires you to take action from passion of R. It, it's cut off again and I can't figure out how to... Oh, I can. Okay, so it says, uh, this is passion of blue roses. I'm sorry, I just figured out how to expand all of your names. Learning new things. Where I'm hoping that this book, which is Girl Boner, The Good Girl's Guide to Sexual Empowerment, will inspire me to take action is in really kicking into research mode for the Sex and Way series. I have read a lot of the primary text that I want to study and analyze for that internet video series. It is now doing a lot of the research behind it, the more academic scientific stuff that I need to look into. The next book I have here is something that has been on my TBR for a very long time. Uh, one of my friends from my master's recommended this to me. So this meets the challenge from Random Rivendell Reader. Find a book that has a character who has a career that I would like to have. And this is A Natural History of Dragons, a memoir of Lady Trent by Marie Brennan, which I believe is the sort of fictionalized account of a female academic who studies dragons. Wouldn't that just be the dream? To be an academic studying dragons, studying fantasy creatures. I mean, if I could have like the true fantasy job, it would be being an academic in a fantasy space. So the last book I have here is Empress of the World by Sarah Ryan. So this meets a couple of the challenges. It takes place during the summer from Madouche. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Features an FF romance from Deckle Edge Dame. Has an LGBTQ plus protagonist from Jess Rosé. Has a child protagonist from M underscore Andrew underscore J underscore Thomas. Is under 300 pages from Patrick Movies Music and Oh, it's cut off again. It's meeting a lot of the challenges. This is the story of Nicola Lancaster, who's spending the summer at the Siegel Institute Summer Program for Gifted Youth, a hothouse of smart, articulate, intense teenagers living like college students for eight weeks. She falls in with Katrina, the manic computer chick, Isaac, the nice guy despite himself, Kevin, the inarticulate composer, and Battle. Battle Hall Davis is a beautiful blonde dancer from North Carolina. She's everything Nick isn't. 
Soon the two are friends and then start startlingly more than friends. What do you do when you think you're attracted to guys and then you meet a girl who steals your heart? So thank you to everyone who sent in prompts. I really appreciate you guys playing along. It's always a lot of fun to shop my shelves. I've changed the formula a little bit this time instead of me like showing the back of my head shopping for these things, I shopped them off camera and then just talked about them, which I think is the more interesting part anyways. Uh, and do let me know if you like this format of Shop My Shelves better or if you do prefer to see me sort of physically shopping the shelves. Let me know. I'm looking for your feedback. Let's talk about the rest of this crap on my bed. In front of me are four piles of books my March TBR, my April TBR, my May TBR, and my July TBR. I have left out my June TBR because uh, those were all pride reads and I do generally prioritize reading pride reads. And so I've isolated these for myself because what I found I was doing was going back to these all the time and not picking out anything new. So maybe in the future I can go back to these. I think what I also need to do is share with you my currently reading pile and talk about where I'm at with these because I am pick picking at these. In addition to new books, I'm picking at these. I did make the decision to DNF Again But Better by Christine R Riccio. Riccio. She is a booktuber. I picked up her book because I enjoy her channel. Unfortunately, I don't think her writing is in a place I'm trying to find a way to say this and be constructive. I don't think the quality of the writing is there. It reads like self-insert fan fiction. I don't regret supporting a fellow booktuber, but I also clearly have too many things that I want to read to finish something that I'm not enjoying. So I decided to DNF that and I will be taking it off my Goodreads. The books that I am currently reading by currently reading, I mean started and I'm stalled on, is uh, Refuse, Canlit, and Ruins by Hannah McGregor, Julie Rack, and Aaron Wunker. This is very good. It is looking at the shitstorm that is Canlit after the UBC Accountable stuff. If you haven't been following it, it's maybe too insular and Canadian. Um, I am enjoying this. The next thing I have here is Dear Genius, The Letters of Ursula Nordstrom, collected and edited by Leonard S. Marcus. So this is about Ursula, who was a badass lesbian in the 1950s who radically changed and shaped children's publishing. One of my, I always talk about my areas of expertise and my areas of interest, fantasy literature and children's literature and gender studies. That, that's my, that's my niche. My, my niches, my niche is especially when they overlap. So Ursula Nordstrom is this epic human who radically shaped children's publishing and I, I don't think she has enough recognition. And so I picked this up as part of a little series that is sort of back burner for me right now. I have a lot of projects in my forefront that I really want to work on, I want to focus on. I'm slowly picking my way through her letters. The next book I have here is also very similar. It is Ungovernable by Therese O'Neill. So this is looking at the Victorian Parent's Guide to Raising Flawless Children. It is uh, humor and history together. This is the type of book that is great to take to uh, any sort of appointment to read in the car quickly because it's funny and you're learning things but you don't have to be like super fine tooth comb focused because it is much more accessible and so again I'm just taking this with me and picking through it. The next book I have here is my German read that ended my epic run of German reads and that is Der Märchen Erzähler by Antonia Michaelis. This is a German YA mystery thriller. I'm not super enjoying it. I loved Die mit der Welt by Andreas, uh, by Andreas Steinhöffel, Höffel, umlauts, they're hard. I think at the end of the day, I like, this isn't the genre that I read with YA to begin with in English. Like it's not my preferred genre. I picked this up because it was recommended by a viewer. I'm always down for viewer recommendations and it's contemporary 
German YA because part of my hesitation to pick up things that I might actually enjoy in German, like fantasy literature, is that I'm going to encounter nonsense vocabulary. Like this is about a young woman, a young girl who is in school, she's in high school, uh, she's interacting with her peers, she's interacting with children, preparing food, moving around the town on her bicycle. These seem like more useful vocab words to build than uh, any set of vocab that I could build from Harry Potter, for instance, but it's not my genre. So I'm gonna put this down temporarily. So I'm adding Harry Potter to my TBR, hopefully trying to get back on track with my German learning. The next book I have here, I picked up in February for Black History Month, and that is Black Leopard, Red Wolf by Marlon James. It is fantasy literature. This is the arc that I was sent in exchange for an honest review through my work as an Indigo employee. This sounds like it should be everything that I want, but it is a really dense fantasy and I haven't had a lot of time to sit and devote singly to one book. So I think what I would like to do is pick this up on audio and see if I can get into the world. The next book I have here is Dude, You're a Queer Slur by CJ Pascoe, Masculinity and Sexuality in High School. This I am enjoying. It is a book that my patrons voted on in June and I am still plugging away at because it is dense. Definitely keeping this on the TBR. A book that I have to read for the podcast that I co-host, Wild Sound Civilized, is Mr. Sandman by Barbara Gowdy. Barbara Gowdy is one of my favorite Canadian authors. I loved Fallen Angels by her. I have a very, very old review for it. I will try and remember to link up above if you are interested. I have a whole playlist for Barbara Gowdy, actually, because I intend to read her entire body of works. She does really interesting character studies and family studies. She looks at messy relationships and I love that. This is the story of the Canaries family. Gordon is the head of the household. He's secretly gay. Doris is the wife and a compulsive liar. They have three daughters, the promiscuous Marcia, the eerily contented Sonia, and Joan, the mute, brain damaged, and musically brilliant youngest child. And so because our podcast is focused on literature, music, and everything betwixt, this sounds like it will be a a meaty text for discussion, I hope. I need to read I Prefer Girls by Jesse Dumont for uh, a book club, like a real life book club that I meet with my friends. We are also reading Stone Butch Blues, which is an out of print lesbian memoir, I believe. So last month we read Pulp by Robin Talley. Do not recommend, do not read that. But what we found fascinating about that was the history of lesbian pulp fiction and the experience of being le a lesbian in the 50s. And so we decided to read an actual lesbian pulp fiction by a woman. Uh, I believe we picked one by a woman anyway. A lot of lesbian pulp fiction was written by men and was like really into, uh, boobs and we are going to read lesbian pulp fiction and a historical memoir and talk about how these texts interact and compare to pulp. And then I am also doing a, I'm planning a reading vlog for this month, which is judging a book by the cover. So this is Normal People by Sally Rooney. This is a believe a prize-winning novel, if I'm not mistaken. Nominated for the 2018 Man Booker Prize winner of the Costa Novel Award. This is a cover that I find repulsive. I hate the this blocking of color. I hate the sort of messy lines underneath the text. Um, I think it's weirdly busy in a way that, like, it's different than this book cover is busy. Like, it's, it's, I find it visually unappealing. And I find all editions of this book visually unappealing. Like it's not a book that I would cover by, which is specifically why I picked it. A lot of, I think, recent publishing, a lot of cover design is about pulling in the right reader, giving an intended message to the reader from the moment that you see the front page. Like a lot of care goes into cover design now. I decided to pick a book that is quite well received. It's a prize winner. It's a book that I've heard a lot of booktubers whose recommendations I respect. 
speak highly about. The story itself sounds like something up my alley. We have young people, they're in school, it's sort of a messy relationship it sounds like. But based on the covers, it's totally unappealing to me. I would never pick this up for myself. And so I am planning on doing a reading vlog where I read this and I check in with it and see if my gut reaction based on the cover is right. I don't know if that makes sense. This is a little experiment for myself. I have a lot of things to read this month, especially if I manage to hit the goal of 50 patrons. If you haven't seen my recent video announcing the Red Rum Book Club, which is a Stephen King book club endeavoring to tackle the first six books in Stephen King's bibliography, when I reach the goal of 50 patrons on my Patreon account, I have seen an incredible response after the first video. We jumped um, almost 10 patrons in like just the afternoon after it was released, so I'm hoping with further promotion we actually hit the goal of 50 patrons this month. Uh, I could be reading Carrie this month as well. If you are interested in learning more about the club, it is a patron exclusive club that is available to patrons at all tiers. So for $1, $3, or $5 a month, you are included in the group, you are included in the discussions, and in the live show at the end of each month discussing the book. A link to the Patreon page is in the description box always. Um, support for the channel enables me to do these long-form projects like the Dark Tower series. It allows me to take the time to do things like research for the Sex and Way series. So if you like what I am doing, you are interested in tipping me for the work that I do, or you want to see more like the Dark Tower series, you want to see the Sex and Way series come to fruition a little bit faster, um, your support is much appreciated. Speaking of the lovely humans who support me, their names are on the screen right now. Thank you patrons so much for your support. I really appreciate the work that you are enabling me to do. It is incredibly helpful to be able to justify setting aside some time. I very much appreciate that they enable me to do this type of work. Thank you guys so much. Let me know your thoughts on this TBR in the comments down below, the format, the books themselves. If you are a patron and you have the ability to vote on the TBR uh, when this video is live, the poll for the book that I am reading for you guys this month should be up as well. Be sure to vote on that if you have the ability to do so. I will leave some things that you might be interested on the screen here at either side, hopefully. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you soon. Bye!